Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create and use lookup tables. Um, this would be appropriate if you've got any kind of tables of data in an Excel spreadsheet, for example, that you uh, look up uh, to get the values that you want based on the um, values that you've got in the first column of the table. Okay, so if we go to data and then uh, lookup tables, we can create a new lookup table. Um, so we go add table um, and uh, these work pretty much the same way as the importing general Excel data does. So if we right click on there, we can put headers into the clipboard, um, which will uh, head the columns correctly so that um, sound design will recognize the, um, the values that are in that table. So if we put octave band in there, for example, I'm just going to go to Excel and uh, just show you what happens when you paste those in. So it gives you an identifier one and an identifier two, which is optional, uh, and it gives you the um, octave bands. So um, as you can see, I've got a table there already, so I get rid of that, uh, which I've got some um, duct loss uh, figures in. Um, so I'm going to bring those in as my um, lookup table. So the way this works is you just literally select the data that you want, press copy, um, go back into your lookup table, right click and select import data. And so there you go, it now has that, um, that data in there for you to look up. Um, so let's just give that a, uh, a reference. Um, and uh, I'll leave it on the default data selection uh, method at the moment. Um, so if I just do OK and uh, OK, um, I'm just going to bring a look up, um, select uh, component onto the canvas. Um, I haven't selected search uh, yet, just so that I can illustrate how this works. Um, so I'm using a select lookup rather than a search lookup. So if I get um, octave band read, for example, I can now select the lookup table that we just created and I can um, just select one of the values that was on the front of the of that um, of that table and it will then select the appropriate row and send that out to the octave band. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, you can use um, two identifiers so you could have um, uh, if that was A, A, and then the second row was B, B, um, and you, your first identifier was A, then it would filter by the top two rows. So the identifier two then would only have the first two rows to, um, to look up in. Okay, so now because these are both numeric um, in the identifier one column, we've got the option of selecting the search um, selection method. So if I click that, uh, what that means now is that um, we can search the lookup table based on the figures that are in the identifier rather than having to select them from a drop down box. So just to illustrate that, um, I'm now going to bring a, a lookup search component onto the canvas and I'll bring a single figure on to be able to input a value and I'll also bring an octave band on to be able to uh, monitor the output. So if I select the lookup table we had, um, if I put in there 0 0.075, which I think was the first value, you can see there it will search that um, and it will find that output. The way the search um, lookup tables work is they will, if I just open it back up, the value that's shown in the identifier will be the upper limit for that row. So in this instance, anything below 0 0.075 and including 0 0.075 will output these values. Then anything um, above this value and up to 0 0.2 will use these and anything um, up to and including 0 0.4 above that value will use these and, uh, and anything up to and including 0 0.8 will use these above 0 0.8 it would return null because there's nothing um, there for it to return so if you wanted to go um, if you wanted this to be basically the, the value that was returned under all circumstances above this value then you could just put another row in um, with the same figures uh, with a very very high number or you could just change this one here to a very high number um, it works the same way if you've got two identifiers so you can um, uh, it will do the search on the first identifier um, initially and then anything that um, 
uh, that equals the same um, value in, in the row um, will be filtered out uh, and then the, the second search will happen on the second identifier. Um, so just to uh, illustrate that, um, you can see here I've got 0.75 as the first value and 0.2 as the second value. So if we go back here, we can see if I was to do um, 0.1, for example, we still have the um, have the same values. Uh, sorry, 0.01. We still have the same values. If uh, I was to go to 0.075, we still have the same values. If I go to 0.076, it now shifts up to the next uh, threshold. Um, so uh, we've got the values in the in the next row down, and again up to 0.2, it still has those same values. Um, so that's pretty much how the um, the search lookup tables work. Um, with the lookup components, you can save these to your um, toolbox, and um, they will save the reference to the lookup table that. Um, that they uh, were using at the time they were saved to the toolbox. So, um, for example, if I was to um, create a container out of these um, components here, and I was to show the octave band on the front and the single figure on the front, and go back to the top of the container. So that's the single figure there that is controlling that, um, that lookup table. So if I save that to my um, project toolbox and recall it again uh, just by typing in the name new because it's called new container, you'll see there it's got the value straight away from that lookup table so um, we can use it in exactly the same way we were using this one. Um, and providing the lookup table that it, it had originally is in your project file, it will be able to look it up. Um, Another thing about that is that the lookup tables can be set to auto reload um, every time you start a new project or every time you open the program. So this means if you've got all of your um, data in lookup tables that are stored in the database file, um, Sound Design can automatically load those into your project. So then any of your um, uh, containers that are using those lookup tables that are stored in your um, toolbox will work straight away without you having to worry about loading in lookup tables or anything like that. Um, the way which I find the creating of that lookup table there is from within the kind of the main um, program. However, if you're making a lookup table that you want to use um, permanently, then you're better off to make it within the database manager um, by going to the um, data items of your um, uh, database and then the, using the lookup uh, table component in exactly the same way.